ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಿಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತರಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ we continue with the <coughs> exposition of the 59th sutra ittal pirarkshesham anne indirade the previous sutra sthana pramanattale ukaram avadharanartham so we observed some aspects associated with this sutra and also the next sutra <coughs> so what is the meaning of avadharana the meaning of avadharana is assertion so in sanskrit there is a statement which is generally quoted in the shastras while explaining the <coughs> meanings of sanskrit aphorisms or sutras it says sarvam vakyam saavadharanam asati bhavake in in case there is no aspect that proves the contrary every sentence is an assertive sentence <clears throat> i will give a modern example suppose i say tomorrow there is a class at 9 o'clock or the class will be at 9 o'clock that means definitely the class will be there even though i will not say i will not use the word definitely or some other word to that effect <clears throat> generally it means it has to be there for example if ram shrinivas says i will come to college at 9 o'clock that means he if he really means that he will definitely come therefore every sentence is an assertive sentence unless proved to the contrary and <clears throat> that is what the statement which says sarvam vakyam saavadharanam asati badake means here <clears throat> the word u which is between the word a and ba in the syllable om which is also a word a combination of words <laughs> and also a syllable as we have seen the word om we can call it as a word we can call it as a sentence <clears throat> and we can call it as a syllable also so from three different points of view it can be called as a word it can be called as a syllable and also a sentence <clears throat> so in this context you have akara which is the first syllable constituting the overall syllable om then you have ukara and then you have makara so akara denotes lord narayana and makara denotes 
the individual soul that is the jivatma and ukara which is in between the akara and makara is in, used in the sense of assertion and also it is used in the sense of that the jivatma is subservient to the paramatma so the relationship of subservience between the jivatma and paramatma is denoted by the ukara or the alphabet u not only it denotes the relationship it also denotes assertion so one word can actually play many roles it can have many dimensions it can have several connotations so in this context who while denoting that the individual soul is subservient to the supreme soul <clears throat> which is in the sense of denoting the relationship between these two he is also used in the sense of an assertion stating that the individual soul is subservient to the supreme lord alone and not to anyone else so when you say assertion it always brings to light a subsidiary sentence having two negatives so <clears throat> i will give an ordinary example for you to understand so you say a conch is always right shankha pandura eva that means what does that mean if you say a conch is always right what does it mean it means that there is no conch which is not right so you have two negatives there is no conch which is one negative and you say that is not right you have the second negative so always an assertion carries a subsidiary is it implies a subsidiary sentence which has two negatives so that is what swami manavana mahamuni explains while commenting upon the sutra of pilaloka acharya which says ittal pirar kshesham anni engiradi so what does the assertion imply it implies the meaning that the jivatma is not subservient to anyone other than the paramatma so this ukara denoting such an assertion is very important and then the question is raised is there any instance where ukara plays such a role in any other context then the two vedic passages are explained which says sa ushreyan bhavati jayamana sa ushreyan bhavati jayamana saha shreyane jayamana eva bhavati it is commented upon in many ways the u which means alone or assertion is placed in different locations in the sentence and the explaining and the meaning is explained in that context saha jayamana ha eva shreyan bhavati sa eva jayamana ha shreyan bhavati saha jayamana ha shreyan bhavatyeva so different aspects of the sentence are shown by applying to the applying the assertive aspect to different places of the sentence or different words of the sentence so in several vedic passages we see that the word u is used in the sense of assertion therefore in this context also we are using the same word in the same sense because always there has to be a precedent whether you have an epidemic or a pandemic like corona which is affected so you say it has resulted in unprecedented bad effects 
that means there is no president. Earlier it has never happened. So whether it is a disease or whether it is, suppose a company is bought for 10 trillion dollars by another company. Then we say this is an unprecedented sale because nobody has bought any other company for 10 trillion dollars. So always we look at some precedent. Earlier has a similar thing happened. What do you present? What do you mean by precedent? Precedent means if a similar event has occurred earlier in history. Similarly, in this context, we are looking at the precedent. Does or has the ukara been used in a sentence in such a context to denote such a meaning earlier? Is there a precedent? Yes. So, Shreyam Bhavati Jayamanaha. So we have several precedents. It says, Sa Ushreyam Bhavati Jayamanaha. And also, Tadeva Bhutam Tadu Bhavyama Idam Tadeva Gnistadva Yustad Suryas Tadu Chandrama Aha. Tadeva Bhutam Tadu Ubhavyama Idam. Tadeva Gnistadva Yustad Suryas Tadu Chandrama Aha. The Supreme Lord Himself. He is Agni, He is Vayu, He is Surya, He is the Earth, He is the Moon, He is the Sun. He is the fire, he is the air. Verily, everything is he himself. Yen nomitya di helide, evakar star at tire, ukar at te prayogi kekan gayade, star at pramanatare, ukaram avadhar and at te, artama haude tire kum yen gay. So, based on its, what is star at pramana? Based on its position in the sentence. Sthana means position. So based on its position in the sentence, this ukara is in the sense of assertion, where it says definitely, verily, without any doubt, the jivatma is subservient to the paramatma. There is no doubt about it. So what does the assertion effectively mean? It means that the individual soul is subservient to the Supreme Lord alone and not to anyone else. And then we have seen how this is further explained by the Evakara in the previous class. But there is an exception. <laughs> this is very important. In general, they say every, every rule has an exception. And always the exception proves the rule. So even there is a, an exception to the rule. Every rule has an exception. Because there are some rules without exception also. <laughs> and one rule which is quoted without exception is every person who is born has to die. This rule has no exception. At all. That is why there is a very beautiful uh, question and answer session which highlights this aspect. There is a very beautiful uh, episode in the Mahabharata known as the Aksha Krishna. So I am sure all of you know the context. I will not go to narrate that because that's a big uh, episode which requires considerable time to explain. But most of the extremely difficult, enigmatic, mysterious questions are asked by an Eksha to Dharmaraja or Yudhishthira, the eldest of the Pandavas, and wonderful, wonderful answers are given. So there, five, four questions are asked in the end, <laughs> with, about which it requires a lot of time. Uh, Time to explain. He asks, Ko bodate kimashtariyam kafpanthaha kacha vartika. Finally, four questions. Who is happy? Who is the person who is happy? What is it that is totally 
um, we can say mysterious, we can say extremely surprising, so we call it as Ashcharya, or which that defies logic, etc. What you Ashcharya? Then Kaf Pantha, which is the right path to attain moksha, and Kacha Vartika, what is the news? And very beautiful answers are given. It requires about half an hour to one hour to explain this entire, these four very important aspects which are very closely associated with our lives. But here, the main intention is, he says, which is the truth of life, he asks. The answer given is, death is the truth of life. <laughs> So, even in Ramayana, there is a very, very, very beautiful statement. I keep thinking about it day in and day out. So, the essence of life is well summarized in this statement or in this shloka, which is told, uh, told by Rama to Lakshmana in the Ayodhya Kanda. He says, Sarve Kshayanta Nichaya. Patananta samuchreya, sanyoga viprayoga anta, marananta ncha jeevita. So now what we do, we try to save as much money as possible and put it in the bank and all those things. We do so many things. But that is known as nichaya. That is you assimilate or you actually amass wealth or resources or property or things like that. But that is not permanent, it's impermanent. Because sarve nichaya hakshayanta, all the which is amass, for example, a group of ant amasses so much of food. Suddenly, some other uh, entity comes and it actually eats away whatever has been amassed by, by an ant, uh, by a army of ants for several days or months. Whatever we may keep it in some bank or something, one of my close senior uh, teachers, he keeps telling he is an epigraphist who has uh, uh, studied several inscriptions. And in all the inscriptions of the kings, or most many inscriptions, I will not say all. They say we have kept so much of money for this particular service to be continued until the sun and <laughs> moon exist in this world. Achandra Arkam Agirpudu, Achandra Arkam Jiya, Achandra Tarkam, etc. That is used in the epigraph, that is the uh, epigraphical uh, records which are there on, in the form of stones, etc. But we see that they have been done 200 years ago and now nobody knows where that money has gone. <laughs> so, sarve kshayanta nichaya, patananta ha samuchreya. So today, one person will become the President of United States or Prime Minister or President of India. But one day or the other, he has to step down from the post. So Patananta has a very material ascendance will definitely result in his downfall. Downfall may, be, may not be very detrimental to his further interests, but ultimately he has to step down from the post. And Samyoga Viprayogaanta, every association between two human beings ends in dissociation. Because nobody, no two souls can be together permanently. Even very devout high husband and wife, they can actually be together until one of them dies and one of them has to die before the other. And marana antancha jivita. So this is the truth of life. And this marana antancha jivita does not have an exception at all. So there is also a rule that does not have an exception and there is also a rule that has exception without faith. So it's a very, very, very enigmatic or mysterious thing. 
this one. So here in this case, as I mentioned, the Jivatma is not subservient to anybody else, but it has an exception. What is that exception? Ittal peri apirat yar kshesham yengiradai yengiradin num shaldu varhal. So the ukara means, according to some acharyas, some interpretations, it means. It is an assertion, no doubt, but it is an assertion with an exception, which says the Jivatma is subservient not to anyone else other than the Paramatma with the exception of Periya Piratya or Goddess Lakshmi. So, who means the Jivatma is subservient to none other than the Supreme Lord except for Goddess Lakshmi or Shri, who is known as Periya Piratya or the senior most consult of Lord Vishnu or Narayan. And for this, we have already seen there is a precedent which says, Puruvan Grihini Kennanne Avaniyonai Enudu Vedu Ahilum Panishai Vedu Grihini Kire in those days when bonded labor was prevalent, the bond used to be written in favor of the master of the house who is a male. But all the services will be rendered as per the orders of the lady of the house. So, Grihini Kennanne Avani Yodai Yudhi Ahilam Panishai Yodhi Grihini So, when bonded labor was prevalent, even today, for example, in India we have the domestic help. And I think it might be there in United States and other places also. So where a servant maid is there. So the servant maid is actually paid by the master of the house who is a male in most cases. Today, the entire societal structure has changed, so <laughs> there might be exceptions. But she has to take all the arts from the lady of the house only. And many a times, even though the male or her husband is paying the money, the lady of the house will feel offended if the if her husband gives directly, if he the husband directly gives some instructions to be made. <laughs> so she she feels that he is intruding into her territory. <laughs> so Always the lady of the house commands the servants as far as domestic aspects are concerned. So here also what happens? Peri Shesham in Giradinnum So that's what is well commented upon by Swamanavada Mahani. Angananike Yukaratare Dakshmi Sheshatvan Shuddu Hiradin. Envarum unden girar hal. So, how is that possible? Adavade akarashit swarupasya vishno ruvataka ishyate ukarashit swarupa yahash yo vati tatha viduhu makaras to tayor dasaiti pranavadakshanam endum akare no chete vishnu sarvaro ke shwaro harihi. Udrita Vishnuna Lakshmi, Ukare no Chete Sada, Akaras to Tayor Vipraha Vipra Shina Rayanayo Sada, Atmanashesha Bhutasya, Vajakashuti Choditaha, in Numitya Devide, Bhagavad Chastra Tire, Akarate, Bhagavad Vajakamahum, Ukarate, Lakshmi Vajakamahum, Makarate, Tadubhaya Sheshabhuta, Jeeva, Jeeva Vatakama, Hom Shuddhoheade, Ukarate, Avatarana Vatakama, Hakpullade, Lakshmi Vatakama, Hakpundu, Ukaratare, Piria Piratia, Kishesham in Giratinum, Nirva Hipper Hill in Gay. So, very beautifully, Pramad Babuni, as usually, explains this portion. So, Bhagavad Shastra. Bhagavad Shastra means what? 
the Shastra that is associated with the Supreme Lord alone and nothing else. Which is Bhagavad Shastra. It, it is associated with Supreme Lord Narayana in all respects. Which is that Shastra? That is Pancharatra Shastra. Because it is said Pancharatra Sekritsna Syavakta Narayana Swayam. And all of us are the followers of Pancharatra Shastra because the Panchasamskaras that we undergo, we have undergone or we are supposed to undergo in, in case of those who have not undergone it. The Panchara, the Panchasamskara or the Samashayana Krama is, has been laid down for the first time and for the last time also. <laughs> In the Pancharatra Shastras only. So as far as Sri Vaishnava religion is concerned, Pancharatra is the, the, the most important Pramana. Because it has been revealed to us by the Supreme Lord Narayana himself. That is why it is known as Bhagavad Shastra. Of course, all the Shastras have come from Lord Narayana himself. And Veda Shastram Bharanasti, and there is none, no other Shastra that transcends our time, is beyond the Vedas. So Vedas also have come from him only. But as far as we are concerned, we give more prominence to Pancharatra Shastra because it is a direct instruction of Lord Narayana to all of us. And it is closer to her than the Vedas, therefore, though it is based on the Vedas only. Though it is according to the Vedas only, we give it more prominence because we are supposed to be the followers of Pantra. So there, the word Ukara, the alphabet or word or whatever you want to call it, Ukara, specifically is said to mean Goddess Mahalakshmi only. And these two are the <coughs> quotes from the Pancharatra Shastra, it says, Akarena Uchyate Vishnuhu Sarvaloke Sharo Hari. Akara denotes Lord Hari. Udhrita Vishnuna Lakshmi Ukarena Uchyate Sada. So Lakshmi, who was actually lifted from the depths of the ocean during the Varaha Avatar, since she was Udhrita lifted, she is mentioned by U. Udhrita Sivara Hena Krishna Hena Shatabahuna and Makaras to Tayor with Prashnina Rayana Yosana Atmana Shesha Bhutasya Vajakaha Shruti Chodita and Makara denotes the Jeevatma who is subservient to both of them simultaneously. So they are one and same. They are faces of two faces of the same kind. Ananya Raghavena Bhaskarena Upayati. Therefore, the Jivatma is subservient to both of them. So the Pancharatra Shastra specifically interprets Sukara to denote Mahalakshmi. And Makara is the Jivatma. There is no difference in interpretation of Makara, which essentially means this Jivatma or individual soul is. <clears throat> subservient to both of them. And one more Prabhana is Akaraha Chitsvarupasya Vishnu Vatakaishyati. Akara denotes Vishnu. Ukaraha Chitsvarupaya Hashriyo Vataka Pati Tathavitu. Makarastu Tayor Dasaha Iti Pranavalakshanam. So the Purport of the Pranava or Omkara is that the Jivatma is subservient to both of them. So this is another interpretation or another way of interpreting the Ukara, which is the which is a part of the Pranava. Both are acceptable to us. There is nothing wrong in any of them. Always when two explanations are given in the Shastras, in the Indian traditional Indian Shastras. The accepted norm is that 
when two explanations are given, the second explanation gains more prominence. Though both of them are valid, the second explanation gains more prominence. That is the general norm followed in all the Indian Shastras and it is applicable here also. So when we say Sarvam Vakam Sadharanam, every sentence is an assertive sentence. Even without an assert, a, a, a word that denotes assertion, the assertion is understood. Therefore, if you say Ukara is the denoter of Goddess Mahalakshmi, it is more meaningful and therefore the second interpretation carries more weight than the first interpretation. You can interpret it in this manner. So is it clear? Adilam anyashayashattvam kaihaye pradhanam So here also Attai pattavam poorva yojane mukhyaminnum attai arudichai hirar Adilam Manyasheshatam Kalihe Pradhanam Indri Adavade Periya Pirati Arak Sheshamahi Ahiravad Adilam Kartil Heel Chunna Bhagavat Sheshatuk Virodhiana Bhagavat Sheshatuk Virodhiana Anyasheshatam Kalihe Pradhanam Yengai But here, once again, after having said these things, once again, Pradhaloka Acharya says, though generally the second interpretation is more preferable than the first interpretation, in this case, as I mentioned, all the rules have exceptions. In this case, the first interpretation carries more weight than the second interpretation. Because when you say the individual soul is subservient to the Supreme Lord, it automatically means he is subservient to, me, subservient to Goddess Mahalakshmi also. But it is very important to note that the individual soul is not subservient to anyone else other than Supreme Lord Narayana. And then in the next sutra, he gives a very beautiful analogy. Devare Halek Keshe Shamana Puroda Shatta in Aikiduma Pole Ishwara Sheshamana Atma was to a Samsari Halek Keshe Shamaka. So he says, first I will explain the literal meaning. If one feels that this Jeevatma is subservient to another Jeevatma. That means, as I mentioned, later we are going to mention he is subservient to another soul, that is his Acharya, which is going to be mentioned in the Srivachana Bhushana. <laughs> but there, once again, he is subservient to another Jeevatma who is equal or more than the Supreme Lord. Because he is the person who actually supreme, supreme Lord obeys. From that point, he is more than the Supreme Lord. So we should not confuse these two things. We say the Supreme Lord is Nisabhyadhika. Supreme none to equal him nor to transcend him. But then we say Acharya has a more important role, even more important place than the Supreme Lord. That is because Acharya is the <clears throat> greatest devotee of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> Since he is a Bhagavata who is associated with Bhagavan in all respects, therefore he becomes more, more superior than Supreme Lord and also Supreme Lord loves a person who is subservient to his devotee. <laughs> so I will give an analogy once again for this. So suppose there is a man who loves a woman very much. He loves her more than he loves himself. He himself. So there is a servant. That servant 
does so many favors to his now his beloved and he also render so many services to he himself but this man will like that servant more when he serves his beloved <laughs> because when his beloved becomes happy he will become more happy <laughs> so an ordinary human being likes a servant who serves his beloved more than a servant who serves himself this is the this is how the world works and that is true with regard to the supreme lord also but in this context he says if an atma jeeva atma is subservient to a samsari chetana you have to underline because he says devare halak sheshamana puroda shakti nai kinuma pole ishvara sheshamana atma vastvai samsari halak sheshamana koi if i become sarva if my jivatma the jivatma that exists in my body becomes subservient to another jivatma who is a bonded soul or a bound soul then that is most undesirable thing that can happen to this jivatma so he gives a very beautiful example devare halak sheshama purodasha what is this purodasha in those days several vedic yagnas to used to be conducted <clears throat> and in those vedic yagnas so i am telling vedic yagnas because today people don't know much they call yagna yaga or homa all they know is they see some fire and some offerings being given to the fire that's all people understand they don't distinguish between the shrauta yagnas the smarta yagnas and the agama yagnas etc because the yagnas are offerings in the fire offering in the sacred fire that are mentioned in the vedas are totally different from what is mentioned in the smritis so you have then you have the ganapati homa chandi homa sudarshana homa etc these are all tantric yagnas mentioned in the agamas so people do not know how to distinguish because they are totally unaware of the procedures and also the difference between vedas and smritis and the agamas etc because what is known as purodasha it is a rice flour based dish which was prepared during the vedic yagnas where the yagnas are prepared then according to purely the vedic injunctions not the smriti injunctions not the agama injunctions so there first the uh, paddy is brought and then paddy is actually pounded and by pounding of the paddy the horns or the coverings of the rice grains is removed and then that rice which is obtained by pounding of paddy and removing of what is known as arms a w n arms that is once again pounded and made into rice flour or rice powder then that is actually mixed with rice and it is made into the form of balls and then it is heated in the sacrificial fire itself and then it is offered to the offered in the sacrificial fire that is known as purodasha an offering prepared strictly according to vedic norms first by procuring the paddy then actually pounding it then removing the arms or the coverings then obtaining the trace that trace only once again has to be made sacred by so many samskaras like prokshana bhukshana etc then that has to be once again pounded and made into rice flour or rice powder then it has to be mixed with water and made into ball a ball shape then it has to be cooked in the sacrificial fire itself and then it starts to be 
So a long process is there. But that Purodasha or that offering which has been prepared through this process is meant for the offering of the, of the Devatas alone. Suppose they have kept it after preparing the Purodasha, the dish, they have kept it ready and uh, they are not attentive to that. Suddenly a dog, stray dog, in India you have lots of stray dogs, earlier also you had, now also we have, and I am sure for many generations to come it will be there. If a stray dog comes inside the place, the location where the sacrifice is being held, and it partakes of the Purodasha, it's a big, 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 big mistake. And several Prayashtita rituals or rituals of atonement have to be created, created, done, performed for that. Even today, if in temples a dog enters the, even the Gopura, the Raja Gopura, it is a big <laughs> mistake and several Prayashtita rituals have to happen. Or when the Lord is brought outside in a ritual procession. Suppose a dog, it actually <laughs> intervenes in the middle and it goes beyond, under the palanquin. Then also that's a big <laughs> mistake. <laughs> and several purificatory rites have to be performed. Immediately they have to be performed. <laughs> so it's a big problem where the dogs come and intrude the territories of Vedic uh, rituals or even temples or things like that. So it's a very heinous thing that can happen and also it's a sign of something very bad that is waiting to happen. So Devare Halak Kishe Shamana Puroda Shattai Naikiduma Pode Just as the Purodasha which is supposed to be offered to the the gods alone, if it is taken away by the dogs, it's a disaster. Similarly, Ishvara Sheshamana Atma Vastuvai Samsari Hedakya Sheshamana If this Jeevatma becomes subservient to another Samsari Chetana, that is the most big disaster that can happen to the Jeevatma. So we have to all to be very, 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 very careful that we should not do this. We should not let this happen. We should realize by some means or the other that this Jeeva Atma is observing to the Supreme Lord alone and not to anyone else. Because as persons who are in this samsara, a person may, be, may like his wife so much that he becomes observing to her or his beloved who may, be a, who may not be a wife or a wife becomes so subservient to another samsara that she forgets that she is subservient to the Supreme Lord. There is nothing more than this. It is known as Atpapahara. So we should never really lose sight of this Jeevatma being subservient to the Supreme Lord alone or the supreme couple alone. That is what Anavada Mamani beautifully explains. He says, Anya Sheshattam Ippadi Krura Moyanna <laughs> Is it so heinous a crime to be subservient to another Jeevatma who is bonded or bound? Yes, it is a very, very, very heinous thing. Anya Sheshattam Ippadi Ati Krura Moyanna Adin Kraur Yetai Sadrishtam Tamaha Rudichai Hirat Devar Hedeke Nethodangi Adavadi Ara Dhirana Indra Adi Devar Hedeke Bog Getaya Sheshamaha Kalpitamana Uroda Shatai Darshanas Parshanadi Hedeke Adar Hamam Padi Mihina Mai Ripkira Mai Kiduma Pode Rupadunu Rap the Sheshian and Ishwaran Kisheshaman at Mavastuai. Samsa Sarva Prakar at Tarum, Heyana, Samsari, 
Sheshamakuhai Engai. There is also a saying in <coughs> Kannada language which summarizes this. So those who know Kannada can understand this. Paisa Madi Nai Bala So a person had prepared wonderful paisa. So in Mel Kote, we prepare in Guru Ayur and other places, they prepare wonderful pal paisam or paisam made of milk. So it is a combination of milk, rice, and sugar. And a lot of ghee is also added. Then you have you add things like raichi, cardamom, and uh, saffron, etc. It is the most wonderful dish. So it had been kept there before offering. Then suddenly what happened? A dog came that way. And without its knowledge, it actually immersed its tail inside the poison. <laughs> so even if a dog uh, comes near and it actually uh, takes the odor of the thing, we don't actually use it or if a dog touches it. But inadvertently, what did the dog do? It actually immersed its tail inside the poison. So even though we have used the best ingredients and taken lots of pains to prepare that poison, it will take three to four hours minimum to prepare that type of poison. <laughs> when the dog immerses its tail inside it, it becomes totally unfit for offering. Sometimes some things are not offered, but they are partaken by human beings. Even it becomes totally unfit for partaking. Because the dog is such an <laughs> inferior animal and its tail, it is associated with its private parts. <laughs> so if it immerses that tail, then it becomes totally inferior. So in Canada, they say, Pahaisa Bhanti Naibala. So it's such a heinous thing that this Jeevatma is subservient to a samsari chetana or a bonded soul. Ishwarana kasheshamana atma vastuvai sarva prakarattarum ye yamana samsari hedak kasheshamakkuhi indai bhagavat cheshatilum anya cheshatum kalihaye prathanam marandum puranduramam dari indayade so he quotes a <coughs> statement from the Divya Prabhanda and says, Ippadi kru ramana anvasha anya sheshattam kalihaye atma ka pradhana apekhitam indre kilchunna arthattai sthiri karikira. Once again he accepts. So again and as again he is accepting that it says, Bhagavat cheshattatilam anya sheshattam kalihaye pradhanam indre. Ravade Lakshmi Sheshat Tilangat Til Pradhanam Indra Vadave Indre Bhagavan Kesheshamayrikum Adilangat Til Danya Vishet Til Sheshat Tum Kaye Atpark Pradhanam Idrk Pramanam Kat Hirar Marandum Puranduraman Dari Indayane Indre Ravade Yamakinkara Samvarati Rimarishi Piran Arulichida Hiram Bail mean Kandir in Girapart today Bhagavat Alexanum Shuluhira Shuluhira Vadavil Terivaditan Namam Parandum Turamam Dari Indri Swami Nudea Terinamate Marandar Hanahirum Maturu Vishet till Chesha Pravati Padna the very hill in Dri Shuluhea lay in the Ital Tanakum Birakum Muritan Nimjiredi, etc which we will actually <coughs> study in the next class. So today, if there are any questions, you may kindly ask. Yes, Swami, thank you very much. Um, you were mentioning about Bhagavad Shastra and being Pancharatra Agama. Yes. So there are, everybody knows that there's also another Agama for worshipping Lord Vishnu called Vaikanas Agama. Can, yes. you exp can you explain the relationship of Vaikanasins and Vaikanasa Agama to Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam. 
Vaikamsa Agamaya and Pancharatra Agama are two, two eyes of Vaishnavas. <laughs> so Vaikamsa Agama cannot be considered inferior to Pancharatra Agama in any sense. <coughs> Though there is a uh, though there are efforts by several Pancharatrikas to demean Vaikana Sagama. Because even Vaikana Sagama, <coughs> according to the Vaikanasas, are given to him, <coughs> given to us by the Lord Himself. Because who is Vikanasamuni? Vaikana Sagama was given to us by Vikanasamuni. And who is Vikanasa Muni according to Vaikanasa Shastra? Even Vaikanasa is also Bhagavad Shastra. There is no doubt about that. But Pancharatra is more popular and is more vibrant than Vaikanasa. So, according to Vaikanasa uh, scholars, the Vikanasa Maharshi is shown with Shanka Chakra only like Lord Narayana. And they say that Vikanasa Maharshi is the Aurasa Putra of Lord Narayana. He is the singular son of Lord Narayana. Narayana Pita Yasya Vata Chapi Hari Priya. And that is how in the, uh, in the Jnana Shloka of Vikana Mahar, Vikanas, Maharshi Vikanas <coughs> we see that he is the Aurasa Putra of Lord Narayana and Goddess Mahalakshmi. And he is the person who perpetuated the Bhagavad Shastra of Vaikamsa. That is also Bhagavad Shastra only. But there is one difference between Vaikamsa and Pancharatra. So, according to Vaikamsa Bhagavad Shastra, a person who is born in the Vaikamsa lineage is supposed to be a Vaishnava. So Vaishnava, Vaishnavatva is based on birth itself. So they don't need Samashrayana separately as we Pancharatrikas do. We Pancharatrikas become Vaishnavas only after having the Panchasamskara or the Samashrayana. There, are, there is no separate procedure in the Vaikhanasas to have this Panchasamskara. But it is mentioned in their Shastras because Vaikhanasa is Shrauta Vaishnavatva. These are very, very important and very detailed topic. It cannot be mentioned in half an hour or 15 minutes. But anyway, I will mention it as a, as a, within a short span of time. So the Vaikanasas have their own Shrauta Shustra, Sutras, Grihya Sutras, etc. Just as other <coughs> Brahmins in the Indian tradition have. And in their Shrauta Sutra, which is also based on the Vedas purely, in the, uh, from what I have heard, I have not studied the Vaikanasa scriptures. While doing the semen tonaina, that is the one of the samskaras, prenatal samskaras when a person when a woman is pregnant. At that time only when the child is in the womb, womb of the mother, there is a component where the samashayanam is done to the child. That is one thing. Secondly, what I have heard is during the process of Namakarana itself. When the naming ceremony is done on the twelfth day after the child is born, the they do the samashrayanam with flowers in a symbolic manner. So the Vaikanasas do need not have separate panchasamskara as we should we have with the branded the Shankar and Chakras, uh, branding of Shankar and Chakras with the heated metal as it is done. 
So they, for them it is Janmakrita Vaishnavatva. Whereas for us it is Samskara Krita Vaishnavatva. Vaishnavatva which has been acquired based on the Pancha Samskaras. But for them it is based on their birth itself. They have to be born in a Vaikamsa home. And in the 108 deviations, the numbers or number of Vaikamsa deviations is more than Pancharatra deviations. That is to be noted. So if you go in South India and Choda, Chera and Pandya, Vaikanasa Divideshas are the temples that Divideshas that follow Vaikanasa Agma are more than those that follow Pancharatra. And even today in Tirumala, they follow Vaikanasa Agma. In Srirangam earlier, Vaikanasa Agma used to be followed before Ramanja Acharya came. In fact, there are evidences to say that Ramanja Acharya wanted to change the Tirupati uh, procedure of worship from Vikansa to Pancharatra, but the Lord did not allow him to do it. <laughs> and one more aspect that is very interesting is the there was a Vishishta Dvaita Bhashya or a Bhashya authored according to Vishishta Dvaita principles before Ramanja Acharya himself which was authored by a person called Srivat Sankha Mishra, who was a Vaikarasa. But what he did was, in the second chapter, second part of the second chapter, the Pancharatra Adhikarna, he has mentioned Pancharatra is also a Pramana, not a thing. <laughs> Therefore, Ramanja Acharya had to write a new Bhashya, wherein he has upheld the authenticity of Pancharatra. So these are all very subtle matters, <laughs> which are generally, which are generally not written in the books, but which are actually given in the traditional uh, instruction, method of introductory instruction from the Acharya tradition. But anyway, Vaikansa is an exalted tradition. There is no nothing wrong in that. But Pancharatrikas, look down upon my cancers in some <laughs> context, which is actually not correct. They have an, a superior, Pancharatrikas have a superiority complex over the my cancers, <laughs> which is not actually justified when you when viewed from an objective point of view. But there is, a, I don't know whether I should be saying all these things, in the during the time of Vedat Deshika himself, the Vaikansas were looked down upon by the Pancharatrikas. And that Vedant Deshika himself narrates an episode where there is a dialogue. These Vaikansas, <laughs> why are they so inferior to Pancharatrikas in their in the rituals they conduct, etc. Then he says, no, no, it should not be considered that they are inferior. <clears throat> they should also be considered on par with Panchanatikas. <laughs> so these are the internal issues anyway. But Vaikansa is as exalted as Panchanatika, there is no doubt about it. Though Panchanatikas feel Vaikansa is inferior. Sometimes we hear that uh, uh, Vaikansa is described as Lakshmi Vishishta Dvaita, and uh, so I'm just wondering, the the Vedantic stance of the Vaikanasans is exactly the same as the Pancharatrans, or is it? Or is no, it as far as I have seen, because recently I have happened to study some Vaikansa texts, some very fundamental texts of Vaikansa, like Viman Archana Kalpa, etc. So there is no difference. It is uh, it is as the same as Pancharatra. So in the Vaikanasans, do they also have the split between the Vatagalai and Tengalai no, schools? No. And They're... They don't consider even this uh, while, of course, now it has changed in the last 20, 30 years. But they don't have any difference between the Vatagalai and Tengalai. They, they, they just follow their tradition. Vatagalai people born in Vatagalai families, they wear that U type of mark only. 
and the others were uh, the this type of mark but they don't uh, discriminate differentiate or discriminate and do they and, have uh, it? that uh, the philosophical uh, ideological view points they don't subscribe to all those things as pantherapicas do and do they give much prominence to the to the uh, divya prabandham to the to the uh... yeah divya prabandha is See, even in Thirubana, Divya Prabandha is given prominence everywhere. In all the Vaishnava Sampradayas, Divya Prabandha is given prominence. There is no, in that there is no, what we call Tartamya or uh, hierarchy of, or something like that. Right. They give equal prominence. Whether you go to, I mean, Chennai in Triplikan, it's a Vaikansa temple, a huge temple in Vaikansa. And without Divya Prabandha, nothing happens in Vaishnava temples. <laughs> So can we say why exactly Ramanujacharya wanted to transform some Vaikanasa temples into Pancharacha temples? No, he wanted to the vibrant Pancharatra is more vibrant than Vaikanasa <laughs> in several aspects. And always when there is a new system, the new system has to be followed. So Pancharatra gained more prominence over the ages. So Ramanuja Acharya promoted, wanted to promote Pancharatra. Even in the Kerala Divya Deshas, he wanted to do that, but the Lord did not allow that. So what we understand. That's how it has been written in the uh, Kuru Parampara, Prabhava, etc. So the Lord, when he actually commands somebody, he does it with a lot of discretion. So from what we understand, the puja, wherever the puja systems were very robust, whether it is Pancharatra or Vaikamsa or some other Agama, the Lord did not want to be disturbed. He wanted it to be disturbed. So he did not do that. We also read that uh, he, tried, he tried the same thing in Puri Jagannath and also that was not able to change the Panchopasana, the Smarta Puja there. Yes, yes, yes. So that is why I mentioned my Acharya used to mention if the if a system is functioning well, why disturb it? But as I mentioned, among the 108, proportionately, if you see, Vaikansa is more than Panchanatha. <clears throat> Punyam bhoja vikasai papadvan takshayaita Shivana virabhut bhumu ramana jarivakaraha Nini krita virinchari dinam kushayi bhutayaha Amam japadam bhoja samashe nishadinaha